Chapter 8 Buns and More Buns This place, said Uncle, is called the Maypin Terrace. It would be a good idea to number the dens like the houses in a real terrace. Why? asked Joan, who was still disposed to take everything Uncle said quite seriously. She was beginning to find him out, though. Oh, it would read rather well, don't you think? Mr and Mrs Polar Bear, 1 Maypin Terrace, The Zoo, London, England. At home, always, because we can't get out. But where would the postman drop their letters? asked Joan. I wasn't thinking so much letters as of cards and callers. Perhaps as there is this wide ditch in front, he could drop them in at the back door. There isn't any back door, objected Kit. You could never at this age get Kit to believe in anything she didn't see. Oh well, through the railings on the upper terrace then, where those children are standing now. The bears, you see, are overlooked both back and front and... Look! cried Joan eagerly. Did you ever... Nobody answered, because nobody knew what she meant by the question. But the cause of her excitement was evident enough. The brown bears in number two den, finding that the children, who had been peeping at them through what Uncle called the back door, had forgotten to bring any buns, or had given away all they had, were now coming to their side. Look, look, said Joan again, but she need not have bothered, for everybody was looking. Who could help it? Having reached the edge of the deep ditch that separated them from their admirers, the bears just sat on their haunches, opened their mouths and waited. Please, said their eyes. A large one, said their mouths. At once, please, said their bodies, as they swayed impatiently left and right, right and left. There was the rustle of a paper bag, a quick movement from behind, and a large round current bun sped swiftly through the air. With a target like that, said Uncle, one should never miss. It's much easier than hoopla, and just as safe. Then all the children took it in turns to dive into the bag, and the bears caught every one. Sometimes they stood, sometimes they sat, sometimes they were on four legs, sometimes on two, but no attitude made the slightest difference to the fate of the buns. The funniest incident of all was when Uncle shouted to the laziest of the bears to get up. At first he wouldn't, but just sat there expecting every bun to drop into his mouth. Then Uncle quickly raised an arm and shouted, Attention! As if he were drilling a squad of recruits, Mr Brown Brun slowly raised himself on two legs, hung down his forepaws and opened his mouth wider than ever, as if to say, The largest you have, please, for you are giving me a lot of needless trouble. In less than five minutes the bag was empty. And then, what do you think happened? Another party of children had passed along the upper terrace to the back door and at once the bears shambled off and squatted on that side, opening their mouths for more buns. Cupboard love, said Uncle, and nothing more. We are very interested in them, but the rascals don't care a straw for us. Let's call on the next door people. These proved to be black bears and they were smaller and prettier than the others, if any bear other than a teddy can be said to be pretty. These fellows come from the Himalayas and other parts north of India, said Uncle. You can always tell them by the collar or band of white fur around the neck. Please, I want to give them a bun, said Kitty. I like them better than the brown bears. I don't, said Phil. I like all bears, said Joan. It looked as though a pretty quarrel might brew. It was prevented by a sad discovery. Uncle had dropped the other bag. He was quite sure he had bought two. So Phil and Wally were dispatched to the nearest refreshment place for some more. While they were gone, Uncle told a story. You know bears are very fond of other things than buns. They love sweets even more than children. Kitty looked serious. I mean even more than children love sweets. It's never safe to trust a bear with a jam pot. And as for honey, you have all read no doubt a great deal about the wonderful railway which runs from thousands and thousands of miles across the plains of Siberia. 
Along the line there are, of course, telegraph poles and wires, and these in places have to be specially protected from bears. Why? asked Joan. Do they try to knock them down? No. It is found that the bears frequently mistake the noise of the wires for the humming of wild bees, and so they claw the poles in the hope of discovering the nests. Poor bears, said Joan. And do they ever climb the poles like the bear in our picture at home? Yes, said Kitty, suddenly reminded. I want to see bear climb pole. I think that particular bear is in another part of the grounds. We shall pass him on our way to the ref. Yes, said Phil, you do. No one had seen the two boys come back, but everybody noticed that their lips were crummy. Yet they couldn't have taken anything out of the paper bag because it was chock full, and besides they wouldn't. Was Phil or Wally, for the matter of that, the sort of boy who would rob a bear of his bun? Ah, said Uncle, you have been getting a little luncheon on your own account. I don't blame you. Is anybody else hungry? There was a great shout of yes, and the whole tribe trooped off as one man. They were in such a hurry that they even forgot to look at the sheep and goats that live on the mountains made of concrete just above the bears, and nobody even noticed the little Malayan sun bear who lived at number four den. He had seen the bag arrive and had opened his mouth ever so wide. If the children had stopped to look back, they didn't. They would have seen him take a lump of sugar, carefully hidden when he thought a bun was coming, crack it into small pieces, moisten it, and so make a kind of paste on the back of his paw, which he proceeded to lick with great enjoyment. There had been many people at different times, and still were in various parts of the world, who would have been very glad of a little extra in the way of buns, sugar, or any kind of food. So the residents of Mapin Terrace really did not know how lucky they were. And this also applied to bears, elephants and other creatures who had already more than enough to eat. But this has nothing to do with our story. It was just a private thought of Uncle's. <laughs>